Okay, so my research interests have focused uh, quite a lot on the genomics of multiple myeloma and more recently I moved to the study of precursor conditions, especially smoldering multiple myeloma. These are very distinct clinical um, diseases and that's because while multiple myeloma is an active cancer that requires treatment, precursor conditions only need follow-up. The problem is that uh, some of them may eventually progress to active myeloma and we can only predict to an extent using current clinical and laboratory features, the ones that will predict. So we asked whether genomics could help in making this prediction. And what we did was studying the whole genome of 10 sample pairs, so 10 patients for which a sample was collected at the time of smoldering myeloma diagnosis and the second sample was collected at the time of progression to active multiple myeloma. So based on our analysis and of course on a whole body of literature which is partially old and partially new thanks to the advent of novel sequencing techniques, uh, we now have a fairly good idea that precursor conditions start off with fewer genetic abnormalities and that includes gene mutations, uh, aneuploidies, and to some extent translocations, even though these may be slightly more stable. Uh, and as the disease progresses towards active myeloma, more abnormalities are acquired. So we described two ways of progression. One uh, where the uh, smoldering myeloma turns into an active myeloma based on clinical criteria without discernible changes of its uh, genetic architecture. We believe these are very high-risk smoldering myelomas that are biologically already an aggressive cancer, except that they didn't have the time to um, produce end organ damage, which is what we use clinically to define multiple myeloma. On the second hand, we found cases where progression uh, comes at the expense of a, a clonal evolution of the genomic structure of these cases and usually it does so on uh, a longer time frame. So we believe this second mode of progression is typical of uh, smoldering cases which are biologically indolent and need a genotypic, uh, swift, uh, genotypic switch before uh, they change into an aggressive disease. So for the latter scenario, uh, one could envision um, curative strategies that would prevent altogether the development of an aggressive multiple myeloma. Um, the problem with our analysis is that it's based on two time points, um, so it's quite hard based on what we saw to predict uh, on a first sampling uh, who will progress and who will not. Uh, so we went on to perform additional analysis and us and others have demonstrated that features like presence of some mutations, namely TP53 mutations, or some additional translocations, namely MIC translocations, and overall a higher burden of mutations and copy number abnormalities correlate with increased risk of progression based on just that one sample you collect uh, when you first see the patient in the clinic. So the future is uh, to incorporate uh, genomic analysis into risk stratification of smoldering myeloma. We're, trying to, we're starting to understand how indolent uh, smoldering and low-risk smoldering myeloma is different from uh, high-risk smoldering myeloma and how high-risk smoldering myeloma is actually very similar to active uh, multiple myeloma. Um, we now need to pinpoint at um, I would say a usable short list of genetic features that could be incorporated into future uh, risk stratification criteria. And I think we need uh, further work before this is done.